Good day, guys. Today we are talking about foundational beliefs and core values that are necessary in order for us to grow and mature in our identity in Christ and for us to have a healthy relationship with our Heavenly Father. Now, in the first video, we talked about having wisdom and why wisdom is so important. And we saw that people perish because of a lack of knowledge, a lack of wisdom. And wisdom is basically learning to discern what God is saying and what God is doing and participating in that very thing that God is doing. Basically, prioritizing God first in our life, just like Jesus did when he was here on the earth. He said, I do nothing of myself. I only do that what I see my father do. And I only say that what I hear my father say. And that is wisdom, is learning to apply the revelation that we receive from who God is. Because when God is revealed, then so are we revealed. And that is when we will know what our purpose is, what our function is here on earth, and know how to correctly position ourselves in God. So without wisdom, we will really perish. And we saw that with Adam and Eve, once they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when they decided to become the judge between what is good and what is evil. In other words, rejecting the judgments of the true judge, the only judge who is God who can judge rightly and who can judge righteously. So that is what happened when we have pride in our life. We begin to reject wisdom. We begin to do things without God right which is actually a very scary thing and that's why proverbs says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom it's not that i'm afraid of what god's going to do to me but i fear of doing anything without him because i know that in myself i cannot do this i cannot win because only god knows me better than i know myself and he knows my potential and he knows the best for me so therefore i'm going to trust him and i'm going to seek him and follow him now a verse that really helps us to understand wisdom as well is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 to 18 and it reads this Nevertheless when one turns to the Lord the veil is taken away now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the Lord now you need to remember when sin entered into the world, it was as a result of us eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When we decided to be like God, when in fact is we were already made in the image and the likeness of God. But we only know this image and likeness of God when we behold God himself. Not being deceived by the devil who was cast out of heaven because of his own pride, because he wanted to be worshipped like God. And with that same spirit, that prideful spirit, he came and deceived Adam and Eve. And he said, when you eat of this tree, you will be just like God, which was false because they already were made in the image and the likeness of God. So we must be careful that we are not being deceived by this prideful spirit of the devil or this prideful lies of the devil that wants to lead us into a place of performance where it says you need to do this you need to do that in order to be loved by God in order to become spiritual in order to have more authority those performance based mentalities always leads to destruction because it leads to burnout because we cannot sustain ourselves only God can sustain us only his love can sustain us like Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And it's because God chose us that we can choose him. And we are sustained by his love. So remember, this is not about your good works. Though your works do play a role in our relationship with God, because faith without works is dead. But it's not because of your works that you are good or because God loves you. God loves you because of who you are. You are made in the image and likeness of love itself. Therefore, like Paul writes here in Corinthians, he says for us to be healed from this corruption that came as a result of eating of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, you need to eat of the tree of life. You need to behold God. And as you behold God, you are being transformed in that same image as you go from glory to glory. So make sure that that is your priority is 
the wisdom of the Lord and seeking God's presence daily. I mean, we cannot go without His presence one day. So that comes down to the blessing. And the blessing is God giving Himself to us. And we need to understand that this is an important belief for us to have in order to maintain and sustain a healthy relationship with our Heavenly Father. Jesus gave Himself for us. God the Father gave His only Son because He loved the world. He did not condemn the world, but He loved the world. And we need to understand that God chooses us daily and therefore we need to choose Him as well. Our desire to become a follower of Jesus and to carry His image and likeness is motivated and sustained by the love of God. God is love and that is His nature and His essence. Understanding what the essence of love is will help us to understand why this is fundamental in Christianity. Now I want to read this famous passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And it's quite a long passage, but I'm going to read it because it's so beautiful. And I'm going to read from verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and give, though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there is prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and have prophesied in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. And the beautiful thing that we see in this passage is that Paul begins to talk about giftings and fruits. And building on fruit, I believe, is more important than building on gifting. Many people seek their identity in their gifting, or they find their validation in their gifting. But we have to remember that giftings are free. It's a free gift from the Lord. It's not a reward. A reward is something that you earn, but a gift is something that is free. And it's got nothing to do with your character. So you can't validate yourself with your gifting. And like Paul writes here, he says, even though you have all the faith to move the mountains and speak the mysteries of heaven and know the mysteries of heaven, all those things mean nothing if you do not have love. Like love is the fruit of the Spirit. It's also the fruit of who God is. It's the essence of who God is. You should actually read this um, differently by saying, wherever there is love, you need to replace it with the word God. Like God suffers long and is kind. God does not envy. God does not parade itself then we begin to see a different image of God in the image of love, in the revelation of love. And if we are made according to the image and likeness of love, then this talks about our very spiritual DNA. This becomes a very healthy measurement. If you want to measure yourself, if you want to gauge where your growth is, then this is a good guideline to use. And I'm not saying we're going to be perfect in this. Like he says, we only prophesy in part. We only know in part. But the day comes when God is fully revealed. When Jesus is fully revealed, we will also be fully revealed. So this once again talks about that passage in 2 Corinthians that we have, where 
it talks about you know the veil that covers our face but once that veil is lifted and we are beholding him as in a mirror we are being transformed so let's be careful of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil let's eat of that what God is giving so rather focus on your fruit than your gifting yes your gifts are given for a reason and a purpose I'm not saying they are important or they have no purpose they are very important but it's not just about the gifts it's about the fruits as well there's a beautiful balance between them and that is what we need to see that must become our motivation in our re relationship with God so I hope this helps I hope this has blessed you if you've not watched the first video go and watch the first video about wisdom it's really great thank you so much for watching see you next time